All right, so chapter four, section one, we are going to be talking about systems of linear equations in two dimensions. So that means two equations and two unknowns. We'll start here because this is the easiest place for us to visualize what's happening. We're going to need to abstract beyond two dimensions because as I was mentioning, many business application problems have many, many variables, not just two. But this is a good place to start to kind of give us some intuition on what's going to happen. And one of the interesting things about this is the rules don't change when the number of dimensions changed. So if we get really good at doing things in two dimensions with two equations and two unknowns, it's just going to be more computations, but the process won't change. So this is a great playground for us to get used to what's going to happen. So for a linear system, there are exactly three possibilities. So three things that can happen. So in two dimensions, it's easier to visualize. We can see that we have two lines or two equations, and the lines would be parallel. If that's the case, our solution represents the point of intersection. And in this case, there would be no solution because the lines never meet. The second possibility is that the lines are skew, so they would meet at exactly one point. So right here, we have exactly one point of intersection, and that would be the solution to that linear system. So in this case, we have exactly one solution. The harder one to visualize even in two dimensions is the last one. So imagine we actually have two lines. So we have this line, but our other equation is mathematically equivalent to that line. What that means is imagine that the two lines are actually the same line. So they lie exactly on top of each other. That would mean every single point on that line would be a solution. And in this case, there is an infinite number of solutions. So it turns out that that last case is important in many business applications. Because if we're trying to maximize or minimize something, there's going to be more than one possible correct solution. We're going to want to choose one with an extra side condition that it's going to maximize our profit or minimize our cost or something else. So minimax problems are very common, and they often have this form where we're going to have an infinite family of solutions, and we want to select the one that will allow us to maximize or minimize whatever it is we're trying to find, whether that be profit, cost, or something else, right? Labor, manpower, hours, something. Okay, so that's really our three possibilities. So. We're going to review some of our methods for resolving some systems of equations. So if we want to solve this by graphing, we would need to draw a graph of each of these equations. So there are several different ways we can do so. So when we have a system that looks like this, the intercept method is often a very nice way to do that. So by using the intercept method, we are going to select x and y equal to 0 to find the x and y intercepts. So if I choose x to be 0, that gives me the equation. Well, if x is 0, I end up with just um, 2y is equal to negative 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, I get y is equal to negative 1. So if I chose x to be 0 and y to be, we solve for negative 1, that gives us a point on the graph. So I have x is 0 and y is negative 1 is this point. The other intercept is found by choosing y to be 0. 
So we would do the same thing, but then this time we would end up with x just equals negative 2, because 2 times 0 is 0. And that gives us the solution this time, negative 2 and 0. So negative 2, 0 is here. And then we play connect the dots. And so that would be the graph of our first equation. We could do the same thing with our second equation. So if I pick x to be 0 this time for my equation of negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 24, if x is 0 once again, I get 4y equals negative 24. I divide by 4, divide by 4, and I get y is negative 6. <coughs> Pardon me. So now I plot 0 and negative 6. And then I rinse and repeat in my y column. So this time I pick y to be 0. And that gives me the equation negative 3x is equal to negative 24. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. And I get x is equal to positive 8. So I had 0, negative 6, and I have 8, comma, 0. So now I plot my other point here at 8, comma, 0. <coughs> and I play connect the dots. And I get something that looks like this. So now. I would find my solution by finding the point of intersection where these two guys meet. So that's going to be my solution. And on our graph, that's going to be the point 4 and negative 3. So graphically, every point on the red line satisfies the equation x plus 2y equals negative 2. And graphically, every point on the blue line satisfies the equation negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 24. Our solution is the one that satisfies both red and blue, so where they intersect. And that is going to be the point 4, negative 3. And we can check that in our original solution by plugging it in. So if I have 4. So my first equation, I should write it out again. My first equation is x plus 2y equals negative 2. And then I have negative 3x plus 4y is equal to um, negative 24. If I check my solution, I have 4 plus 2 times negative 3. And I want to know, does that equal negative 2? Well, it does. 4 minus 6 indeed is equal to negative 2. If I check it in my second equation, I have 3, or negative 3 times 4, plus 4 times negative 3. And I want to know, question mark, does that equal negative 24? Well, that's negative 12 minus 12, which indeed equals negative 24. So we have found graphically what our solution is. All right, so it turns out in the big scheme of things, this is probably the worst method for solving systems of equations. So why would we think that? So we want to resolve this, and we're going to use substitution. So this is probably one of the methods you're more familiar with. The idea is the fundamental principle of algebra that says, I can replace things that are equal with things that they are equal to. So if I take a look at my first equation right here, I have x plus 2y is equal to negative 2. I can solve this for one of the variables. In this case, I'm going to solve it for x. 
and I get x is equal to negative 2 minus 2y. This says x is the same as negative 2 minus 2y. That's what equality means in mathematics. It means that these two things are the same. So then the idea becomes that I can replace equals with equals. So if x is the same as negative 2 minus 2y, well then that means this x is the same as negative 2 minus 2y. So I would now have the equation negative 3 times x, that x is the same as negative 2 minus 2y, plus 4y equals to negative 24. So now I have a new equation that has only one variable that I can solve. So I distribute into my parentheses, and we get 6 plus 6y plus 4y is equal to negative 24. And we get 6 plus 10y equals negative 24. We minus 6, we minus 6. We get 10y equals negative 30. Divide by 10, divide by 10. We get y is equal to negative 3. We then put that back into this formula giving us x is the same as negative 2 minus 2 times negative 3. So we get x is equal to negative 2 plus 6, which gives us 4. So then we get that our solution, our x comma y, is the same as 4 and negative 3. If we look back at the previous problem, where did we find our solution was? Ah, 4 and negative 3. So regardless of whether we use the graphical method or the substitution method, we get the same solution in the end, right? Which is 4 and negative 3. Continuing this journey, we are now going to talk about the third method for solving systems of equations. So once again, same system of equation, or of equations, but this time we're going to use elimination. It turns out elimination is the method that is going to generalize. This one works out very well in any number of dimensions. So the idea for elimination is based on the idea of equality once again. If we have the statement that two things are the same, we can do the same thing to both sides of an equal sign. So our goal then is to somehow add these two equations together. To help me do so, I am going to label each of these equations. So I'm going to have equation number one is x plus 2y is negative 2. And equation two is negative 3x plus 4y is equal to negative 24. So now my goal is to make the coefficients somehow equal but opposite. So we need to choose to eliminate a variable. I'm going to choose to eliminate the x's. It doesn't matter if you choose to eliminate the y's. You will get the same answer in the end. So I want the coefficients on the x to be the same, but of opposite sign. So I have a 1, even though it's not written in a negative 3. So what would I need to do to equation 1 to make it have the same coefficient as negative 3x, but opposite sign? So I want it to have a positive 
3 in front. So what would I need to do to equation 1? I would need to multiply it by, by Perfect. Multiply by 3. So we will denote this as 3 times equation 1 plus equation 2 to replace equation 2. So when I write that out, I'm going to get 3 times equation 1 is 3x plus 6y is equal to negative 6 plus equation 2 is negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 24. And then I'm going to add these two equations together. The whole point of multiplying by the negative 3 was so these were equal but opposite. When I add them together, they then eliminate. And that gives me 6y plus 4y is 10y is equal to, and then negative 6 plus negative 24 is negative 30. So I now have a new equation that has only one variable in it. So then I could then rewrite my system as x plus 2y equals negative 2, and my new equation 2 is 10y equals to negative 30. Well, I could then solve this last thing by multiplying equation 2 by 1 tenth. So I would go 1 over 10 times equation 2 to replace equation 2. So 1 over 10 times 10y is equal to 1 over 10 times negative 30. So that would give me y is equal to negative 3. And that's my new equation 2. So equation 1 is still x plus 2y is equal to negative 2. And my new equation 2 is y is equal to negative 3. So now I have this solved for what y is. I can just read y off equation 2. So what's y? Negative 3. But I still need to solve for x. So now my goal is I want to eliminate this y in equation 1. So to do so, what would I need to multiply y by in equation 2 to make those equal but opposite. Negative 2. Perfect. So I'm going to go negative 2 times equation 2 plus equation 1 to replace my equation 1. So let's write that out. I'm going to have negative 2y is equal to 6 plus equation 1 which is x plus 2y equals negative 2. I add my two equations together. I get x. These guys eliminate as they're supposed to, and that equals 6 plus negative 2, which is 4. And this gives me my new equation 1. So finally, after all of that, I end up with my new equation 1 is x and I have an equal sign 4, and my new equation 2, or my old equation 2, is y equals negative 3. So now in this nice format, what does my x have to be? 4, and what does my y have to be? Negative 3. So my solution x comma y is equal to 4 comma negative 3. All right, so let's go ahead and resolve this thing. So the top equation will be equation 1, and the second equation will be equation 2. So let's go with negative 3 times equation 1 plus 2 times equation 2 to replace equation 2. That means equation 1 is going to stay the same, so 2x minus 3y 
is going to equal to 10. Negative 3 times equation 1 is going to give us negative 6x plus 9y is equal to negative 30. And 2 times equation 2 is going to give us positive 6x take away 4y is equal to 90. When we add these two things together, those eliminate, and we get 5y is equal to 60. That gives us our new equation 2 is 5y is equal to 60. And we could then continue to solve by going 1 fifth times equation 2 to replace equation 2. Equation 1 doesn't change. 2x minus 3y is equal to 10. Equation 2 becomes 1 fifth times 5 is y. And 1 fifth times 60 gives us 12. We could then do 3 times equation 2. plus equation 1 to replace equation 1. So that would give us 3 times equation 2 would be 3y is equal to 36 plus equation 1 which is 2x minus 3y is equal to 10. We add those up, those reduce out and we get 2n or 2x is equal to 46. And that gives us our new equation is 2x is equal to 46. Equation 2 is y is equal to 12. And then finally, we could do 1 half times equation 1 to replace equation 1 to get x equals 23 and y is equal to and that would be the solution to our equation. And we get our ordered pair is then 23 comma 12. So each of the times we went to resolve these types of equations, we ended up with something where we had a nice exact answer. But if we go back to the very beginning, we know that we have three different possibilities. So all of the examples that we've done so far fall into this middle case where we got exactly one solution. So now the question is, well, what happens when we have those other two cases? So let's take a look at example number four. So let's go ahead and do 2 times equation 1 plus equation 2 to replace equation 2. So our first equation stays the same. We have x minus 3y is equal to 1. And then we do 2 times equation 1 is 2x minus 6y is equal to 2 plus equation 2 is negative 2x plus 6y is equal to 5. We add those up. The x's reduce out. But then the y's also reduce out. So we get 0 is equal to 7. So our new equation 2 is 0 equals to 7. But now we have a little bit of a problem. This statement is false. 0 does not equal to the number 7, right? So that tells us, since this statement is false, the linear system has no solution. So 
So let me obtain a false statement. The linear system does not have a solution. So if anywhere in the process we end up with something that's false like we did here, the system can't be solved and there is no solution. Let's take a look at example number five. So we're going to do or try the same thing. So let's go negative two times equation one plus equation two to replace equation two. So that's going to be negative four x minus six y is equal to negative twelve. Equation two is four x plus six y is equal to positive twelve. We add these things together, those reduce out, those reduce out, and we get zero is equal to zero this time. So our new equation one didn't change. So two x plus three y is equal to six. But our new equation two this time is zero is equal to zero. That statement is true. When all the variables reduce out, and the statement is true, There are an infinite number of solutions. So this is the case where those two lines were actually the same equation. And we ended up with an infinite number of solutions. solutions. So our next example is going to be in April 2018 Galois Incorporated stocks decreased from $50 per share to $44 per share. But Notharian Rings increased from $12 per share to $30 per share. If you invested a total of $4,078 at the beginning of the month and then sold them at the end of the month for $4,444, how many shares of each stock did you buy? So when setting something like this up, the first thing we need to do is define our variables. So let x be the number of shares. of Galois Incorporated and let's let Y be the number of shares of Notharian Rings. So then we know a couple of things about each of these. So the price per share of Galois stock went down, but Notharian's rings increased. So we know at the beginning of the month and at the end of the month we had the same number of shares. So at the start we have that the Galois 
incorporated stock was $50 times X, so that's the value of Galois, plus, at the beginning of the month, Notharian Rings was 12 times the number of shares, so that's going to be the value of the Notharian Rings has to equal, well, how much money did we spend at the beginning of the month? 4,078. So that's our first equation. Our second equation is going to happen at the end of the month. The value per share for Galois at the end of the month was 44 times the same number of shares plus the value of Notharian rings at the end of the month was 30 times the number of shares Y has to equal the total value at the end of the month, which was 4,444. So we calculated the value of each thing as the price per share times the number of shares. So our first equation is 50X plus 12Y equals our total spent at the beginning of the month, 4,078. When we sold our positions at the end of the month, we had the value of the Galois stock had decreased to 44, so 44x plus the increase in Notharian rings was 30 times y equals our new total at the end of the month. So this gives us 50x plus 12y equals 4,078. And our second equation is 44x plus 30y is equal to 4,444. All right, so now we need to do some elimination on this. So let's go ahead and eliminate the x from equation two. So let's go negative 44 times equation one plus 50 times equation two to replace equation two. So let's go with negative 44 times 50 is going to give us negative 2200 x and then negative 44 times 12 gives us negative that's not right negative 44 times 12 gives us negative 528 is equal to, and we have negative 44 times um, 44444, 4, 4, 4, 4. so negative 44 times 4444, 4, 4, 4. and that gives us negative 195,536. And now we've got to do 50 times equation 2, so 44 times 50 and 30 times 50. Professor? Yes, ma'am. Are you supposed to multiply the 4,078 instead of the 4,044? Oh, yes, I was. Thank you. You're welcome. So negative 44 times 4,078. So yeah, negative 179432. And now back to our other one. So 44 times 50 is 2200 plus our second one was 30 times 50 is 1500 equals, and then we do 50 this time times 4,444, so 50 times 4444, four, 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 and we get 
222,200. So now some things eliminate and we have negative 528 plus 1500 gives us 972 is equal to, and then we have 2222, 200, zero, zero, take away 179432, we hit enter, we get 42,768. So we could substitute that back in, but it's going to become a mess. So let's divide that by 972, and we get 44. So finally, we divide, we get y equals to 44. So then we get 44 times x plus 30 times 44 is equal to 4444. We subtract 30 times 44 from both sides. So now on our calculator, we would do 4444 minus 30 times 44. Gives us 3,124. So 44x equals 3,124. And we divide that by our 44 to get 71. So x is 71 and y is 44. So x was the number of shares of Galois Incorporated and y was the shares of Notharian Rings. So 71 of Galois and 44 of Notharian Rings. So a couple of things we want to note. When we did this, those numbers got huge, right? And that can make things a little bit of a pain. That's why our calculators come up short, but where Excel is going to be a better choice for a lot of these things. Excel is a lot easier for us to manipulate. All right, so let's take a look at number seven. So at the start of December 2001, the retail price for a 25 kilogram bag of cornmeal was $10 in Zambia. By the end of the month, the price had fallen to $6. The result was that one retailer reported an increase in sales from three bags per day to five bags per day. Assume that the retailer is prepared to sell 18 bags per day at $8 and 12 bags per day at $6. Obtain a linear demand and supply equation and compute the retailer's equilibrium price. So if Q is our demand and P is our price, we're going to have our ordered pairs are P comma Q. So then we need to pair up some of these pieces of information. So at the start of December, we had that the price was $10 and it fell to six. At the beginning of the month, the demand was three. And at the end of the month, when the price fell to six, the demand had become five, right? So we have two ordered pairs here. So if we're using P and Q, we're going to have at a price of 10, the demand was three, and at a price of six, 
the demand was 5. We have something similar happening. Assume that the retailer is prepared to sell 18 bags per day at $8. So for $8, we're going to pair that with 18 bags. So we're going to get the ordered pair 8 and 18. We're also going to have 12 bags gets paired with six dollars. So when we have our price at six dollars, we're going to have our demand as 12. So now we need to find the linear equation for each of these. So the first thing we need is our slope. So it's going to be 5 minus 3 all over 6 minus 10 gives us 2 over negative 4, which reduces to negative 1 half. And then we have our equation y equals mx plus b. So y equals negative 1 half x plus b. And we need to figure out our b. So using our first point, we have 3 equals negative 1 half times 10 plus b gives us 3 equals negative 5 plus b. We add 5, we add 5, and we end up with our equation being 8 equals b. So in this case, our ordered pairs were of the form p comma q. So our traditional equation is of x comma y, so then that means we're going to have q is equal to negative one half p plus eight. That is going to be our first equation for demand as a function of price. So what does that tell us? So for each increase in price for a dollar, how many less how many less bags are, would we be expected to sell? Well, what's our slope? Negative one half. So for each dollar, we're going to lose half of a bag of sales, is what it's telling us. OK, now we're going to rinse and repeat over here. So we have m equals 12 take away 18 all over 6 take away 8. So that gives us negative 6 over negative 2, which is going to give us positive 3. So once again, we have y equals mx plus b. Our slope we just found is 3. And we plug in either of our points. So 18 is equal to 3 times 8 plus b. So 18 equals 24 plus b. We minus 24, we minus 24, and we get negative 6 is equal to b. So our equation is q equals to 3p minus 6. So we now have each of our demand equations. One is for our supply, and one is for our demand, right? So our equilibrium price is the solution to this system, right? So if we were to say eliminate one of these equations, but substitution will actually be easier in this case. So let's substitute that in for Q we would get negative 1 half p plus 8 is equal to 3p minus 6. If we multiply everything in the equation by 2, we will eliminate our fractions. So that gives us negative p plus 16 is equal to 6p take away 12. 
So we minus 6p, minus 6p, minus 16, minus 16. We get negative 7p, those will reduce out, those reduce out, equals negative 28. Divide by negative 7, divide by negative 7, and we get p is equal to 4. So the equilibrium price would be $4 per bag. And we could figure out the demand by putting it back into either equation. So Q would be 3 times 4 minus 6, which would be 12 minus 6 is 6. The demand So equilibrium price would be $4 a bag, and the equilibrium demand would be six bags, right, at that price.